Hello everyone, welcome to Power Playground. This is your host Michael, and today I have another free CAD tutorial. It's quite a doozy here, to be honest. I'm going to be covering a lot of advanced concepts, as well as showing you all a full product design here. Now, this particular product is going to be, or I guess design model, whatever you want to call it, is going to be a solder fume extractor as well as a solder spool holder. So this will uh, be able to uh, suck the uh, or extract the uh, hazardous flux fumes that come from soldering. I need this for my projects just because I don't really have anything like this. I usually have to like steal a fan from my bedroom. That's not really a good long-term solution. So something that's compact here, which is why I'm gonna be using a 120 millimeter fan and some carbon filters, which I bought for some other uh, 3D printing based things. Of course, I'm gonna also uh, use a few other little bits and bobs here. I'll name them off real quick. I have this eight inch articulating ball arm type thing that's usually used in certain camera rigs. I also have a dowel, just a wooden dowel for the uh, solder spool to hold on, just because I want something nice and smooth that's already available to me there. It works. Then of course I have a small switch just to toggle the fan on and off, as well as a quarter inch 20 nut. What today's episode is going to be focusing on is mainly the main portion of this here. There's going to be a few other little parts we could uh, design here like a fan grill as well as like an actual stand rather than using that 8 inch articulating ball arm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and jump to FreeCAD here real quick. Alright folks we are in FreeCAD now. I went ahead and did a uh, cooking show maneuver where I am showing you a final product. Well final-ish. I'm going to change these uh, little top segments here. This part here is going to be different along with this part. That's just kind of me fooling around. This little hexagon, that'll be the cutout. That'll be where a quarter inch nut sits. And then of course our solder, our solder spool will sit down here. And our fan will sit, will attach here. And then our filter will slot in. So it'll slot in this little area. Have a little tab for convenience to pull it out. Now that I have shown you all the basic in concept uh, to an extent, I'm going to go ahead and create a new file and I'm going to go ahead and start with a sketch. We are going to be doing this along the Y and the Z app plane and this will be the side profile. So overall we'll have a bottom line. That's just the bottom of the print obviously. And then we have this little lip up here just where the uh, filter sticks in. And this little crevice right here is where the filter uh, stays. And then of course we have like a little Thing that goes down like so just so we can save material since of course this is a more advanced tutorial i do want to go a little bit in terms of concept of how to design something for 3d print at least optimally because you can just go all willy-nilly and uh you know coat or design whatever you want but at the end of the day filament costs money and uh, it takes a long time to print unnecessarily big and bulky objects so you want to try to uh, conserve as much as possible uh, make sure your wall thickness isn't incredibly large. This particular uh, thickness here between these, this point and this point here, gonna be about four millimeter. Reason being is it has to be able to hold up pretty well because it's just, there's gonna be one mounting point like right here. Or that's gonna be able to take all the weight, which I'm designing it for a relatively uh, chunky, bulky solder spool. So this is going to be the little uh, dowel holder essentially. Do our. Uh, basic constraints here now i'll show you a little tip so i want to make these all or both these sides equal and i don't want to have to do a whole lot of work actually i want to do very little work so i'm going to do a blue line or three blue lines from point to point to point so we do this bad boy now i do want to point out that uh, this show probably would have been out like a day or two ago had it not been for the incredible difficulty that FreeCAD has presented me in the past week here. Don't know why, but this particular model has been giving me a lot of trouble. Essentially, we just have a, um, like a constraint here. And of course, everything scales pretty equally here. I'm going to go ahead and start defining some dimensions. Basically, I want to go with the smallest dimensions and work to way towards the biggest ones. As per experience with FreeCAD, if you go with the big ones first, you're going to screw up a lot of things and you're basically just kind of have to undo until you until things just get way unscrewy so like i said this is going to be about minimum four millimeter thickness just to uh, make everything nice and rigid and then this little gap right here that's going to be 7.5 and this uh, particular point to point that will be 127.5 and then the radius of this circle here will be 8.5. I also want to define an angle of 180 degrees. This point to point 
that'll be 10.5. Also, I'm going to define this point to point, which is going to just be another four. That is the extent of our minor measurements. Now let's do the uh, big, big kahuna here, 198.5. And as you can see, yep, a little, uh, a little weirdness going on here. So that is why you want to heed caution when doing these big scale changes. So what we're gonna do here, we're just gonna make these nice and big so they'll try to not collapse on each other. Okay, and then this point to point I forgot about, gotta make that 12. This point to point is also gonna be 10.5. So now we just have two lines of sketch here. So this particular point will be locked in at zero. So now everything's properly constrained. And I'm gonna go ahead and close that. We're gonna pad this and that will be 135 will be our thickness. There we go, so that's our basic shape fleshed out. So now we're gonna do our second major shape. So this will be along the X and the Y axis. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide this for now. Correct part design, sketch, X and Y plane, already good to go. Let's go ahead and go back to our standard lines. We'll go ahead and define a few things here. I'll go ahead and post up the drawing here again just to show you all this bit of reference. So we got one last arc going on. That'll be our little like detent just to grab onto something here. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the arc here. It's gonna be a radius of 20. Hey, that's really close. This particular point is gonna be changed. Now these particular lines will be at 135. Oh, there we go. Glad I started with that. And then this point to this point, that will be 150. At least that one close, thank goodness. I'm gonna blue line these bad boys together. So yep, I wanna go ahead and do some more blue lining. Well, let's try this out. Yes. Oh, cool, it automatically does an equal. You learn something new every day. That's gonna be defined by 48.5. And then we'll do another blue line. These little measurements here, they're gonna be shrunk a bit. 23.5. We're gonna equal these guys. Define this width about 90. Oh, so let's do this in the first. 130, yeah, it's way the frig off, so I wanna go ahead and just zero this guy out here. Reason being is I'm just gonna go ahead and define a bunch of measurements that would normally I would normally define. It just makes things go a little bit quicker. Usually you'd leave that for last and I would wholeheartedly recommend it, but it's, but this is a base shape. If it's something that needs to be moved afterwards, like uh, like a pocket or something that I'm gonna use to like cut through something or I need to map to a face, that would be another, another, such, or another case. For all intents and purposes for this particular application, locking the model into, a, or the actual uh, sketch in first before uh, just figuring out, or defining where everything is, is gonna be a lot easier for me. So now, this guy needs to be locked in. This will be our halfway point, 67.5. All right, so to find this constraint, it'll be 10. This needs to be 10.5 from this point to here. Hey, there we go. Okay, we'll pad it. And then the total height will be 16. Actually, scratch that. This will actually be 19, apologize. Okay, so we've got our two pieces here. We're gonna go ahead and do the intersect and the part, I believe that's what it's called. Yeah, intersection. There we go, there's our basic shape here, looking pretty snazzy. 